synthetic as opposed to natural mineral slurry as their name is top. In the last 20 years or so, synthetic polymer drilling fluids have really replaced bentonite slurry on a majority of drill shaft applications in North America, although the prevalence varies locally. The use of polymer drilling materials worldwide has also increased dramatically, although perhaps polymers have been uh, more slowly adopted in Europe and in Asia and the Middle East. Polymers function in a different way than bentonite, and some advantages and limitations are available with each, as we'll discuss. So the type of synthetic polymers used in drilling slurry are long chain like hydrocarbon molecules which interact with each other and with the soil and with the water to effectively increase the viscosity of the fluid. The appearance of the polymer fluid is that of a slippery, slimy, viscous liquid, as is evident from the polymer fluid dripping off the tool in the photograph here. You can see the shape of the polymers in this scanning electron micro photograph of a polymer slurry magnified to 800 times its actual size. You can imagine how the presence of these hair-like molecules increases the viscosity of the fluid, but there are some chemical forces at work also. The polymeric strands form a three-dimensional lattice or a web-like structure that can actually form a membrane on the excavation sidewall if a positive fluid head is maintained. This membrane can be noticeable in some cases that I've seen when a drill tool excavates a clump of soil that has a sticky wetted surface but appears to have little penetration of fluid into the mass. Although there may be some indication of a polymer membrane at the soil interface, there is no formation of a filter cake as there is with bentonite. So as a result of this lack of filter cake, polymers have a greater tendency to lose fluid into the soil around the excavation with time compared to bentonite. This lack of a filter cake appears to provide benefit in terms of the side resistance at the concrete to soil interface since polymer fluids that are in widespread use have not exhibited the detrimental behavior that's associated with excessive bentonite filter cake buildup. The polymers add relatively little weight to the fluid, so the unit weight of the drilling fluid is not much greater than that of the water used to prepare it. Given the low unit weight, lack of filter cake, and potential fluid loss, the positive fluid head is critically important to achieve a stabilizing effect on the excavation with polymer slurry. But since a higher viscosity does not produce a detrimental filter cake, the viscosity of polymer fluids can be increased relative to that uh, normally associated with bentonite in order to help fluid loss uh, and to maintain positive head pressure. Polymers can be delivered in either liquid or dry granular form and they're mixed and hydrated prior to introduction into the excavation. It may not take as long to mix and prepare as bentonite, but this step still requires attention to get the product fully mixed and get the viscosity to within the target range. The amount of polymer required to prepare the slurry is generally much smaller compared with the quantity of bentonite clay to prepare a similar volume of bentonite slurry. The mixing includes agitation and circulation to disperse the polymer but the shearing action that occurs with some types of pumps is beneficial to bentonite by the way, or detrimental to polymers because it can break down long chain polymer molecules and therefore that's best to avoid. For similar reasons, polymers are not typically used with circulation drilling or with the hydrogen equipment for diaphragm holes or barrette construction. And that's because the continuous pumping tends to break down the polymer and the types of pumps that uh, have a tendency to shear the fluid. Because there will tend to be some fluid loss into the ground with polymer slurry and the amount depends on the soil and the viscosity of the fluid. But in any case, uh, there tends to be some fluid loss into the ground with polymer slurry and therefore it's very important 
to continuously monitor the fluid level within the hole to keep a positive head pressure. If a hole is left open for an extended period of time like overnight, for example, someone will need to tend it to make sure that the fluid level is maintained. Otherwise, it could drop to the point that the needed positive head differential is lost and the hole could collapse. Another notable difference compared to bentonite is the fact that the polymer fluids do not hold soils in suspension as well, and the settlement of even fine-grained soils can occur after completion of the excavation if the slurry is not adequately cleaned. The desanding plant used for cleaning bentonite is not suitable for polymer because the polymer would tend to clog the screens and the shearing action tends to break down the polymer. So a typical method for cleaning the polymer is to add some flocculating agents to help drop suspended solids out of suspension and then provide some quiet time for the fluid to settle out. A good practice is to fully exchange the drilling fluid with fresh slurry by pumping from the base of the excavation like you see here with the airlift pump and then discharging it into holding tanks like this spoils barge on a bridge project in the water. This photo shows some weir tanks where the sedimentation can take place and you can see the sediment occurs in one end of the tank and the slurry off the top sort of spills over the weir gate into the next and into the next and progressively cleaning the slurry in that way. After completion of the work, the polymers can be broken down with a deactivating agent and bleach works on most types of polymers and then the suspended solids can drop out quite easily. This property provides one of the attractions with polymer slurry in that disposal can often be accomplished with relatively little cost or effort compared to bentonite. Because of the turbidity issues with bentonite slurry and the fact that the clay remains in suspension for a long, long time, and the relative inability to move the bent remove bentonite once it is mixed, the disposal of bentonite can be a significant cost and or environmental consideration in some areas. So a comparison of polymer drilling fluids to bentonite suggests that there are advantages and limitations of each, and we'll go through these. Firstly, the polymer, very easy to mix, less time to hydrate. Bentonite, uh, mixing and hydration time is a little bit more involved. With polymer, there's a time required for desanding and removal of fines. It's perhaps a little less simple to do than with bentonite, but with bentonite you need the desanding plant equipment and all of the handling paraphernalia that goes with it. With polymer, there's no filter cake, uh, and therefore fluid loss and there's less stabilization of the hole, kind of combined with the uh, lack of extra weight. With bentonite, the filter cake plus the extra weight improves the stabilization of the hole, and that can be important, especially in coarse grain soils like gravel. The no filter cake is a benefit uh, to polymer in the respect that there's less detrimental impact on the side resistance. Whereas with bentonite, the filter cake can affect the side resistance. Exposure time and additional preparation uh, attention might be required. Lastly, polymers can break down due to shearing and pumping, but they're easy to dispose. Uh, bentonite may be more costly to dispose, but because it doesn't break down so easily, it's easier to reuse. So now with this, you know some of the basics about drilling fluids, and in the next lesson we'll learn about how the axial resistance can be affected by this type of construction, and consequently the specifications and quality control, quality assurance measures that may be employed to get the performance from the foundations that we need for design and consistent with good construction practice.